As day two of Magna got underway, I was reminded that Magna is not only a great place to see new gear, but also to meet people face to face. Old friends, new friends, raving fans, and it's all part of the experience. Sometimes you just have to stop staring at your tank and go smell the salt water. Ecotech Marine makes the big boy L1 Vector pump, the middle boy M1 Vector, and now the little boy S1. Jay, talk to me about this little guy. Okay, so our intention was always to make a small, medium, and large return pump, circulation pump, same way that we have a small, medium, and large Vortec. Okay. And uh, the S1 is, is the third, obviously, to the Vectra line, but um, it should actually add that level of versatility where people with pretty much any size tank can, uh, can use this as a return pump or a circulation pump. So at maximum head pressure is 11 and a half. Uh, maximum flow is 1400 gallons. Sure. Because it's a DC pump, you can also regulate the output. If you don't need all of that flow, you can run it at less and you're not giving up energy as you would be with an AC pump where you're basically always consuming the same amount of power and then manually or physically regulating that flow. So how many watts of power on this guy? Uh, that's 55 watts at, at maximum output. I mean, I'm thinking on larger systems, this is great for running media reactors. You can run it right off here, especially if you get an external pump with a lot of pressure, the mini reactors can't handle it. I can use this little guy. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, one of the things I'm most excited about is you get all of that functionality of the Vectra in terms of all the controllability, that integration that you're talking about and everything else. But then on top of it, it has that form factor, which will allow you to even run it in, in uh, onboard sump tanks, for instance, uh, Red Sea Max 170 or uh, my, I have an SR60 Innovative Marine in my office where that will actually fit, fit in the back. Really? So I can, I can replace the, the somewhat noisy st stock pumps that come with it with this, with this. And, and then get that, that controllability that, you know, that I don't currently have wow. with my return pumps. One thing I've always found with any client I've worked with that had an all-in-one is one, they're probably getting rid of it, and number two, they like, it's okay, but I want to change this, or I change that, and then I change that. They're constantly swapping out things. This is going to be a great way to get lots of versatility in an all-in-one or a sump type system for running as a return pump, running for reactors. It's all the controllability and energy saving that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, good work on the little guy. You got small, medium, large. One of those is going to be just right for your system. Where there's a return pump, there's likely a sump, but a sump that intentionally leaves out a common form of mechanical filtration? Last year it was upstairs, now you got something downstairs. That's it. Show me what you got. We got the whole package here, so. The whole package being? We have the newest line of uh, refugium model sumps, so it's a Triton style sump. You can see it has uh, refugium first, the skimmer chamber, and then your return section. And no filter socks. No filter socks. At all? At all. So this is more of a dump chamber first. Correct. Into this refugium. Yep. Which is actually sizable given the size sump. Yeah, you want to have a minimum of 10% with the Triton method, so this fits that standard. And then skimmer return box. Correct. And I'm assuming I can get different colors of this nice laminate? Yeah, we have a different colors in our laminate series. We have a white and red, and we have a red mercury, which is a black and red, and then we have the green and white. And the same adjustable baffles like you guys are known for. Correct. I noticed you though, you put your probe holder on the adjustable baffle, so you never have to worry about your probes being out of water. Exactly. We made it so when you adjust the baffle, your probes actually get adjusted with it, so they're not stationary in one spot. And that's thinking. This is everything downstairs, but you said there's something you want to show me upstairs. That's correct. We got the shadow up there. And it's actually functioning. It's functioning. Let's go have a look. Rick, I'm sitting right here by this overflow. I got my ear in it. It's totally it's pretty quiet. quiet. Yeah. How do you get that done? Uh, what we use is a three-pipe system. It's a full siphon system. Some people call it a bean animal, but okay. we call it a modified bean animal. Um, you have three pipes, a short stand pipe. Okay. You have your middle secondary pipe, and then you have your emergency in case you have one of these get clogged, it fills that. Do you have to run it in the bean animal setup? You don't have to. You can plumb it with one pipe. You can plumb it with two pipes. You can use all three. You know, it's your choice and how you want to plumb it. So there's space in the box, and you guys are using inch and a half pipes, which I like. More flow. More flow, and it's oversized in case something goes wrong. Exactly. This handle, theor theoretically, this can handle up to 4,000 gallons per hour. 4,000. I wouldn't run it that high, but you could. But it can handle it. Good work, man. You guys are always pushing it. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, man. We'll see you. All right, I've talked about a pump which would go in a sump or a tank, so now I need fish. A big story in Magna this year has been captive bred fish, and a lot of these captive bred fish have come out of nowhere. <laughs> no one knew that these fish were going to be available. That's definitely the case with these angelfish right behind me. I'm here with Matthew. You <laughs> said you have nine species of angelfish 
that you've bred in captivity and yeah. no one knew anything about it. <laughs> no, no one knew anything about it. We've been working on this for quite some time, kind of developing some new research and you know, techniques to make this all possible. Um, you know, so we, we're debuting our new company called Poma Labs uh, Incorporated. So we're debuting nine different species. We have three on display. The one that's making the biggest buzz is the conspicuous angelfish. This is like the holy grail of angelfish collectors. You know, it's cool. Uh, you know, for me, it's, it's kind of like the ugly duckling. They're just brown. They don't look like much here, but the adult phase is just amazing. Uh, they have personality, color, they're, they're just great fish. And now what are these super little small guys over here? But the little ones are Singapore angels. You know, that's one of the more common species available. You can go into any pet shop and get them pretty reasonably priced. Uh, they just have a pretty bad track record. So, you know, the, the neatest thing what we're doing, you know, not only are we debuting nine different species of angelfish, but we're debuting kind of a different model in the marketplace. So now, you know, these fish are guaranteed to survive. We want these people to, to have success with the fish. So we're offering, you know, every fish that we sell comes with a certificate of identity. So you know that it comes from our hatchery. We offer kind of an industry leading 30 day guarantee. 30 days. You know, that's kind of unheard of. But the reason is, you know, we want these people to succeed. If you go out and buy one of these wild conspic angels, you, you know, we want to take some of the stress out of it, you know. So we want you to have a better buying experience knowing that these fish are going to eat. Uh -huh. They're not going to be loaded with disease and they're going to thrive for years to come. We think that's the best chance for you to get a healthy fish. So when are these fish so, going to be available? Uh, they're available now. You know, we just launched the website. Oh, really? Um, so they are available for purchase retail direct. So I ship them from our lab to your tank. This is the shortest transport route to a healthy fish. <laughs> yeah, there's, so, you are the supply chain. <laughs> I, I am it. There's no middlemen here. There's no oceans to cross. Um, there's no habitat destruction. There's no disease. There's nothing to worry about. So I think it's a pretty stress-free buying environment. Well, congrats on the, getting these guys bred <laughs> and keeping it secret because I heard nothing about it. No one, yeah. no one even mentioned anything about it. The yeah, breeders I that's, talked to. That's been the general general word on the street. It's been a lot of success. Congrats on that. And you know, I'm building a tank for a client that's just angelfish. So I look forward to having some of these oh, good, in good. there. Yeah, let us know. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Mark. I forgot something. Pumps, sumps, fish. But what about salt? It seems like everyone is coming out with the salt these days, but what happened was when the largest online retailer of fish and coral with one of the longest successful track records comes out with the salt, well, I had to talk with Live Aquaria's Kevin Cohen to hear about you guys' salt, because I would have never expected this out of Live Aquaria. What's the story with this? We're really excited to announce the Live Aquaria Professional Reef Salt. We've been working on this project for quite some time now. Okay. Uh, we utilize the salt in our facility in Rhinelander. Just this? Just this salt. So, again, we have a 30,000 gallon coral farm and aquatics facility in northern Wisconsin, <laughs> Rhinelander, Wisconsin. <laughs> you need salt. We, we need a lot of salt. So we, we mix up about 8,000 gallons of salt a week. And you know <laughs> our biggest hurdle at times is ensuring that the salt mixes up clean and clear, okay. and that there's really high quality ingredients and in, in raw materials that go into this salt. It mixes up at a much lower alkalinity than some other brands. Lower being? Lower meaning around 90 kH, okay. which, is, which is, I think, perfect for, for you and I that grow Acropora coral primarily. Okay. Uh, magnesium levels are, are 1350 to 1400. Um, and calcium levels in you know, 440, 450 at, at 35 parts per thousand. So we offer three different sizes. Um, they're going to be available in sept mid to late September. From the Live Aquaria website? F from drsfostersmith.com. And also um, we'll have these on Live Aquaria as well moving forward. So. so if you're buying fish and coral from you, you're running the salt, then you're going to have a more closely matched parameters what they're used to. Definitely. So, so if you purchase corals from, from the Divers Den section on Live Aquaria or what we captively grow in our facility, you bet they're going to be the exact same salt um, if you're using this at home as well. So it's a win-win. Good job, Kevin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now that the basics are covered, let's talk about a fish that started spawning due to an air conditioner failing. Captive bred fish? Yep. Again. This time though, it's an anthias, and it's a deep water blotchy anthias, or verbonius anthias. I'm here with Tom. This is your baby, talk me through it. We actually cultured these accidentally. In accidentally? A way. Yeah, the first, the first spawning was, was not intentional, so we got lucky, but what happened is we have a cold room that we specifically built. And no, it, doing... it's a cold room because they're deep water? Yeah, yeah so it's just got an uh, air conditioner unit hooked up, and we're just keeping it down at around 24, 23 degrees, just to replicate what's- Celsius. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> put that yeah. in. So yeah, we're replicating the depth at about of a, at about 100 meters or 300 feet mm -hmm. kind of depth. Um, and that's, that's the average temperature, I guess, down there, but it does spike. So I did have plans to raise the temperature eventually, but, but that, I didn't think that would be the, 
the, the queue that was so strong, right? So what happened is um, we built the room to ho hold fish for the research project for Cal Academy, as well as for to be able to breed deep water fish. And luckily it, it didn't fail while they were there with all their fish, but so they, they took um, they took their fish and then we grew these antheas out. They, they got us like sub-adults, they were quite small. Um, they got us six of them and we split them into two tanks, three and three. Okay. And basically we had a power outage one day um, and the temperature went up to 28, 29. And that night we had 80 eggs, you know, <laughs> like it just, just happened. And then, and they kept going every night for three weeks after that. Spawning. Yeah, spawning. So smaller, smaller amounts of eggs, mm -hmm. but that's, we've now sort of tweaked it where we basically will keep them uh, in fairly cool water uh, yep. most of the time, yep. feed them a lot, and then just spike the temperature and they'll, they'll spawn and then yeah, back to cold. So. How long from getting the eggs to you have an animal ready to go? Uh, they grew surprisingly quick. They, they were um, settled at 30, 34 days. They okay. were settled out of, yeah, wow. so that's, that's pretty fast, but they're a voracious uh, fish. They, it was incredible how much they eat. They're, they're really unusual looking larvae as well. They're basically the head is as wide as it is high. Like they have a really round <laughs> head, big eyes, and a massive mouth. Are you shipping these worldwide? How do we get one? Well, I'm not shipping them worldwide. We're, we're exclusively in the US. Um, and we just launched our new website yesterday. So it's a, it's a what you see is what you get uh, based website as well as our common stock. Hmm. Um, and yeah, they're online right now. There's, there's um, I think there's about 12 in the country, 11 or 12 in the country right now. I can't remember. Wow. <clears throat> I think so we sent 11. So you're hoping to ramp up over time? Yeah, yeah. so we, we kept some of our stock, uh, some of the F1s, and we're going to try and get new brood stock. So yeah, we'd like to scale it up so that the Antheus becomes, that Antheus becomes uh, more affordable and more available. Because I mean, they're a gorgeous reef, yeah. you know, partner, they just fit right in, they're peaceful enough. But at the same time, they hold their own. Um, I just was talking to a, a client yesterday and he was telling me he had an Antheus that was in a tank full of damselfish that were quite aggressive and he just, he just had them all in place. He wouldn't take any anything from <laughs> them, and he, yeah, he was holding his own. So it's good to know they've got that community yeah. aggression, but not too much, I guess. Yeah. Beat those suckers into submission. That's right. <laughs> well, Don, that. that's a great success story through a mistake yeah. that, that it happened. Uh, good to see these guys because I have a client who's wanted one for months, and he right. can get one like that, yep. and it's yep. captive bred, yep. which is great to see. Thanks. Keep up the good work, and uh, I'm going to grow one of these suckers on for my tank. Yeah, good. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. No worries. Thanks, Mark. Keeping a reef and seeing the inhabitants can be very relaxing. One company said very relaxing isn't good enough though, and took the relaxing one step further. Ike, when I think current, I think lights. So what is this blue light ring here? Well, this is a light, just like we make, no, I'm just kidding. This is our new uh, Bluetooth controller. So this controller actually controls your LED lights, but it also controls your wave pumps and your DC pump. Okay. It also monitors your water temperature makes the connection of everything easy. It works on one app that is used uh, Bluetooth versus Wi-Fi. Okay. And this also has an audio port. So we have audio an to audio go with port. it. An audio port, yeah. What do you need audio for? So the audio, you know, this is about experiencing your aquarium. Yeah. And most of us, when we experience our aquarium, when we're in a room, we experience pumps or you hear noise the weather effects that we have with it actually go with the audio and it makes it very soothing and relaxing. Okay, show me that. Sure. Audio and lights, what does that mean? So these are our Orbit Marine IC lights. Uh, these are uh, semi-new, um, you know, two lights do an SPS pretty easy, but uh, you do, the Bluetooth controller can handle as many lights as you want. Like 20 lights? You could do 20 lights if you want. Okay. Yeah, absolutely, you can connect them. Uh, and then this is the audio. Uh, we do ship it with a uh, small blue, or a little speaker. Okay. But I've got a higher end speaker here because we're going to have a lot of people. But you can plug it into any speaker that you wish. So your home theater system. You can plug it right in and you can do as much sound as you want. So what, what kind of sounds are we talking about? Give me a sense of this. Uh, well, when you open the app, we have a bunch of on-demand modes. Okay. Uh, and you could do like, uh, we have one for rolling clouds and your pumps actually start to actuate and you can hear it and you can see that the lights are actually moving a cloud across the tank. Okay. So it is really meant to be relaxing. Uh, if you want something more dramatic, you could go into a lightning storm and we have it synced to go with the lightning. Um, we even have when you wake up in the morning, you can do it and it's calm ocean waves. Okay. 
uh, and uh, you'll hear that, um, you know, at what you would at the beach, you hear some seagulls going in the back. <laughs> um, one of the cool features is you can set your lunar lights, and we have two on-demand modes that will run with your lunar lights. So you can actually go to sleep at night with a calm wave action, okay. and in four hours, everything goes off. Can I take a nap in your booth, Ike? Yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> That's really cool. So you can not only control your pumps, you control the lights, then you get an audio piece of it too. Yep. You guys do a lot with freshwater too. Is there gonna be a freshwater we version? Uh, we've got some really cool freshwater stuff coming out, uh, very similar. Uh, it'll be out late fall, early winter. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got some really cool stuff for freshwater. Now this is something I would have never thought of as audio in conjunction with your fish tank. It makes total sense, but you caught me off guard on this one. Yeah, it is different, but I can tell you that we've had some beta users use it, and everyone who uses it loves it. It's like having a public aquarium in your room. Yeah. It's all about how you experience your aquarium, and it's another kind of input into us that aquarists aren't used to, but it really does change your aquarium keeping experience. Definitely. Good work, man. All right, thanks. Magnet 2017 threw me some curveballs that I wasn't expecting and showed some great progress of the saltwater tank hobby. And speaking of Magna, next Magna is the 30th annual Magna happening in 2018 in Vegas, baby. Vegas! September 7th through 9th, 2018, Magna 30 is going to be going on and you should be there. Now here's a catch. If you win big in Vegas, call me. I'll build you your dream tank. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. This is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Until next time, have a good one, enjoy your tanks, get to planning for Magna 2018, and know your tank personality.